This is, I like to take pictures of this now and then make geologists try and guess where the bone is. Because uh. <laughs> it's right where they dug in. Um, that's probably what this stuff is from too, is it's weathering out. So you're not the first to realize there's some vertebrate fossils no. here. No, no so I am not. Th this is the Burke Museum going back how many decades? I think, so I think it was one expedition as far as I can tell that okay. was in the late 90s, early 2000s. Oh, really? Yeah, so they came out, they collected a fair amount of stuff actually from, it's pretty complete. We have uh, a whole bunch of, like there's a big full deer antler, there's uh, a fractured saber-toothed cat tooth, there's what might be an elephant scapula, elephant meaning mammoth, not like Got it. modern elephant. Yeah. So they collected a whole bunch of stuff, wow. but as you can see, it's <clears throat> super fun and not at all awkward to come out and collect here on oh. this vertical wall. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's part of the game, right? but I mean, yeah. so you were tipped off to this, so that you, this is your specialty. Are you, would you call yourself a vertebra, vertebrate paleontologist? Yes, I'm a, I'm a vertebrate paleontologist. I like uh, Cenozoic stuff. I would say probably my specialty is a little bit deeper in time. Okay. I really like more like Oligocene, Miocene stuff. So once you get up into like multiple millions of years old. But uh, there's so much Pleistocene stuff out around here that I just mm. keep getting called out for it. So Okay, so who tipped you off to this as a potential Pleistocene uh, vertebrate spot? So this spot got tipped off to me by a middle school teacher in Yakima huh. who uh, is a big geology buff. Yeah. And he came out and basically found an entire horse leg sticking out of the wall uh, and <laughs> yeah he called me up because I was working at Central at the time and I came out and sure enough yep that is I get a lot of emails from people who say they have fossils and they're frequently chert but right. this one was real so yes. that was very exciting huh. yeah and then we filed a permit and then got all this stuff and then also found out a whole bunch of other stuff had been collected. And that's why we're kind of keeping this location secret, except we're just saying in the Yakima River Canyon, yes. because this is a permitted thing. This is you're following the rules, et yes. cetera. So you're hoping to continue with this spot, even though you're not really a Pleistocene person? Yep. Uh, I mean, I'm not really a Pleistocene person, but let me tell you who is extra not a Pleistocene person. Uh, this, the Cretaceous and Permian people <laughs> at the Burke Museum. Okay. Um, so mostly I've been guilt tripped into this ah. through uh, Greg Wilson and then also from Scion who wants to do some paleontology. Uh, he's, I just pointed out because uh, they're up yeah, there. He's so. in heaven, that's yeah. right. Uh, he's an undergrad here at Central. Good. Yeah, yeah. they are. And yeah. So uh, you're not, you're no longer at Central. Which university are you affiliated with? I am also still a Wildcat now because I'm at University of Arizona, which is also the Wildcats. <laughs> Got to stay yeah. on brand. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yeah. Slightly bigger Wildcat, I think. A little, <laughs> little less goofy. Yeah. Well, I'd love to go up a little. If there's something else to look at up yeah. high, I'll just keep the framing nice and tight here and just kind of follow Sounds you. Sounds good. Mind. Yeah. Ugh. Um, put these shards right there and while we're walking what 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 time frame is your your wheelhouse um so i would say my wheelhouse is i really like the stuff between about 45 to 15 million um oh, okay. and that's because i work mostly on a specific animal uh -huh. called an orionaut which was like the most common like legitimately the most common animal in north america for millions of years and it's completely dead now and there's no descendants whatsoever okay. so yeah <laughs> okay. okay i'm tight on both of you guys what, what's what's going on what's, cyan what are you doing over there um, we got, so we found this exploded long bone oh, um, oh shit. yeah uh i paraloided it together uh here's just like a bag of the rest of the shards um this is honestly how you find a lot of fossils the most yeah. fossils you find are not nice and complete uh I don't know what this is from, but... If you hand me the bag. So Bree did find a little curl of... Uh, oh. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I realize if you don't really know very much about fossils, the fact that Scion just went, oh, is probably very confusing because this looks yes. like a turd. But I'm, I'm confused. Yes, yeah, so you see how there's like a little bit of a ridge right here? Yeah. So this is the, the surface of uh, like... It's called an articulation surface, so it's a joint, essentially. Oh. And while everybody has shards like this, if you broke down your bones, my bones, a horse's bone, we couldn't tell just from shards. When you have an articulation surface like this, sometimes you can tell. I don't know, just looking at this, mm -hmm. but maybe when we glue it together, <laughs> there I might be something see. more there. I see. So, 
Yeah. So the fact these these things are all kind of disarticulated is that mm -hmm. a clue to the depositional environment? It is a little bit. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So the fact that this is exploding is probably more recent. It's probably something that has been weathering out and, you know, uh -huh. it, it exploded on the uh -huh. surface. But uh, if you take a look at a lot of these bone chunks, um, so this one's not a good example. We do actually see signs of here. So this is, this is the external surface of the bone. Uh, and you can see it's kind of cracked and there's some flakes yeah. and probably with this one, it's kind of hard to say for sure that it's not modern because you can get similar stuff in modern environments. Mm -hmm. But when you look at this on like a whole specimen, which we do have some whole horse toes and some other things, uh, it says that it was sitting out in on the surface for quite some time before it was covered. Good. These have some good tough on oh, them nice. too. Okay. A little smaller. But yeah, a little, little smaller. Um, so what essentially all of this is, is that it was sitting out on the surface for a while the fact that we have like a whole, oh, I just broke a chunk of bone. <laughs> we'll just put that back there. Cyan can glue it together. Um, <laughs> uh, it was sitting out on the surface for a while and then eventually uh, it was uh, covered up probably by, I think it was probably near a river and then got covered up. I see. Um, the fact that we have a whole leg uh, and actually quite a few relatively solid bones yeah. um, does indicate that uh, they weren't dead for too long so uh, there might actually be something like a, a drought essentially that killed them um, i wouldn't go so far as to say this is like a death assemblage ah! right, <laughs> everything right. dried up and died right. but uh it's not regular accumulation like you would see if you walked across the canyon today yeah uh, it's a lot more concentrated um, with some signs of weathering so there probably was there was some bad days yeah. prior to these animals dying well, I guess it, I'm just thinking as I'm listening to you, it must be kind of easier if you have a whole series of beds with a known story or already, and then yeah. you're just adding to the story. Here, you're kind of like blindfolded, and then you're like <laughs> dropped in on a hot air balloon to like figure out what's going on, right? There's no yeah. context, I guess, is what I'm saying. There's no context, really. Uh, the fact that we're near the river, at least, is kind of nice. Uh, you know, I, the rocks do tell you that this is near a river anyways. Mm, okay. Um, but the, just the bones themselves, they do kind of tell a relatively consistent story. Yeah. So it's not impossible when you're dropped in with no context. The hardest part when you're dropped in a place like this is what time period is it generally yes um because then you have to really like when we first came out here we thought it might be ellensburg we thought it might be pliocene uh -huh. or even miocene uh, -huh. uh and then we found an antler from a deer deer only showed up uh, about five million years ago um so that at least kind of pushed us more towards end of pliocene pleistocene uh and then we found out someone had collected a saber tooth cat well those were only here about 2.5 to 12,000. so mm. That gives you a more tight range. Mm -hmm. And then we found out what the species of horse was. That even tightened it a little wow. further. So every single piece. So that means that if you find one bone, eh, good luck. But the more bones you find, the better. But yeah, it would be nice if there was like Oligocene, Miocene, Pleistocene, Pliocene. Yes. Probably not Pleistocene, Pliocene. That would be a little bit weird, but yeah. Well, I was telling Bree, you know, it, it's tempting because we got some airfall volcanic ash nearby. Mm -hmm. I still don't think those have been properly studied. Yeah. My God, if there was an intersection of some of this stratigraphy with some of those datable layers nearby. It'd be nice. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That would be a great way to do it. Well, and it would be nice because there's a bunch of... So there's been a bunch of geomorphology uh, and tectonics work out here okay. in the gravels. Yeah. Um, but while these gravels are over top of this site, the gravels that they've dated are, of course not <laughs> and they're uh -huh. not continuous so we do know that there is some stuff just down the road that's been dated to about uh, a million or less um there's stuff that's even like a hundred thousand which this could be a hundred thousand years old but until we have a date we won't know it's probably old enough that carbon dating is pointless so mm. oh you're in this weird never never land between yep. carbon dating too old for carbon dating too young for Whatever. Yeah, you know, strike lead, number whatever. sixteen thousand for the Pleistocene. <laughs> <scene. laughs> some uh, some cores that indicate someone took a sample here. Oh, we gotta figure. We that don't out. know who it was. Okay. <laughs> I cannot find them. Right. Um, yeah. So have you published on uh, 
Washington uh, paleontology to this point? Um, I've published on the Ellensburg deer, so the deer fossil that was found in Craig's Hill. That was a very easy little short paper. Good. I have a couple papers that I need to put a finishing touch on and submit for Wildcat Creek. We're probably going to split it into three separate papers um, because we found some interesting sedimentology stuff, some interesting taphonomy, which is what happens to an animal after it dies, yeah. uh, and then uh, some um, new species as well that haven't been discovered out there before. So. Well, I'll link to that Craig's Hill paper yeah. uh, in the description below, and then I'd, God, I'd love to be able to share more of your work. If you're going to, are you hoping to continue here in Washington? Yeah. It's like summer field season. Yeah, or whatever? so I'll give you a call when I go out to Wildcat because oh, that place is good. If you like big wads of bacterial spit, <laughs> and who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> it's like big wads of bacterial spit, and then a mouse deer jaw. <laughs> oh, it's exciting. Maybe you'll die because it's so steep. It's thrilling. It's really thrilling. Yeah. So to finish, our younger viewers know about TikTok. So you have a TikTok <laughs> channel? I do have a TikTok channel. Okay. That's right. Yeah. What's it called? Geopedal Fabric. Yeah. Geopedal Fabric. I'll Geopedal link to that fabric. as well mm -hmm. down below. And uh, you've done some writing. Uh, I have, for yeah. mass consumption. Yes, yeah. I, uh, I'm a freelance writer for uh, PBS Eons on Eons. YouTube. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. So that is it. Mostly that gal who's in the like basement of a University of Montana. <laughs> yeah, Colgan? Callie. Callie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, Callie, uh, Blake, who's never in a basement of a building in Montana, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then Michelle, uh, who is in basements of buildings in California usually, and then gets okay. flown in to PBS. Yeah. So. Uh, and then Hank Green uh, is the producer. Mm -hmm. He used to be a narrator as well. Mm -hmm. I did get to make him say some really stupid fish names at one point, which was pretty funny. I did get caught actually once because I, uh, <clears throat> I may have tried to slip in a stupider fish name than I really needed to. Oh, wow. I think I tried to make him say at Attractaspidae. Oh, my God. <laughs> is that a fish or a snake? There's a snake that's very similar. Uh, and I got caught and he had to, he had to switch it to Bothriolepsis. So. <laughs> Yeah. How many of those episodes have you written? Uh, like 20, 25. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Do you have a yeah. favorite or two that I could link down below? Yeah. Um, that you're especially I, proud of? Well, I have the most popular video in all of PBS Digital Studios history. So <clears throat> it's oh, called, uh, <laughs> well, oh, but the, no, sorry, I'm waiting for the second flex. The second flex is I have a video that trended above a Cardi B music video for approximately 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to write that on my tombstone. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. So, uh, I, the, why the Megalodon definitely went extinct. Uh, and then, uh, that time it rained for 9 million years, 2 million years, 2 million years. You think I would know the number? That's the title. Why? Yeah. Yeah. And why was that trending? No, those are two. Think? Those are two separate ones. Oh, what's the one that was trending? Uh, the, <laughs> that time it rained for 2 million years. Oh, that time it rained for 2 million yeah, years. Yeah. You wouldn't think that would be a, riveting title but oh, i don't know i guess i'd click on that right? one yeah. like it really did rain for two million years it rained uh very heavily there's a wet period um it's called the, called the carnian pluvial episode ah. um yeah and it was uh, essentially the the reason we had dinosaurs uh is because it rained out so many other things oh my god i gotta go watch <laughs> that one now i gotta be uh the... yeah dinosaurs are created by rain not like in a biblical sense but in a <laughs> evolutionary sense <laughs> So how how big is big with some of these wildcat uh, discoveries? Like as far as like physically the bones or the physically the bones. I've got a tortoise that's about this big. Uh, really? Except, yeah, except it's in about thirty thousand pieces that I'm slowly gluing together and complaining about. Um, yeah, Pedro found that. So it's Pedro's tortoise, and we've got. I think that's the biggest that we found. We've got a dog skull that's about this big. Uh, this is just the back of the skull, so we don't have any of the cool teeth. Um, we've got previous discoveries have been like partial oreodont skulls. So like an oreodont is kind of pig sized. So about like half of a pig skull essentially has been some of the bigger stuff. But and that's your baby. The that's my baby. Yeah, yeah right. that's my uh, baby. Yeah. Wow. OK. Yeah. And that's also kind of a top secret spot. Yeah. I mean, it's not top, I mean, top secret, uh, you know, it's with all of these sites and with archaeological sites i just don't give away coordinates and we say the general region but yeah. it's not yeah here it's a little bit easier to find the fossils yes they're bigger they're a little prettier right 
Wildcat Creek if you find a fossil. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty exciting. <laughs> yes. So yeah. uh, I'm a little bit less worried even about there because it's very dangerous to get to um, and very hard to find stuff. Yeah. 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 We'd have to get somebody to raft us over or something, but that's I, not. I could probably help with that. Yeah, I figure there's a lot of people who I think so. Yeah, raft people for are potential just dying fossils. <laughs> any way they can. Yeah. All right, let's go get this toe. Good. Well, I'm ro rolling again just to let you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't fall. <laughs> yeah, Wildcat is very similar uh, in steepness, except okay. the consequences of falling are higher. way higher. That's a root. All right. Toe. Toe. Oh, I got my hope up for like two seconds because the weight was sticking out. I thought it was that other piece that I found. Oh, no. Uh, I think um, I was lost to time. Yeah, so I think that we can probably take this out without a jacket just because this stuff is so soft. Yeah. We did have to jacket a previous specimen, an antler, um, but we jacketed it with tinfoil <laughs> uh, and then I unwrapped it on TikTok and everyone thought it was a burrito. So <laughs> most disappointing dirt burrito ever. God, could you imagine if there's like another leg back there? I mean, that's what that happened the last so time. Kidding, so really? yeah, that's what happened. I have some photos actually of, go ahead, Simon, uh, of me pulling like a horse toe where it was two horse toes connected in the wall. And then the rest of the leg a little further down. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So what does jacketing mean? Uh, so jacketing is when you have like kind of fragile specimens, you mm -hmm. don't actually want to excavate them like cleanly out here. You want to take them plus a big chunk of the rock that they're in. I see. But oh. if you just try to take the whole rock, it usually crumbles apart. Yeah. So you build it a jacket, which is sturdy, usually made of plaster. But in this case, it wasn't that fragile. So we made it out of a uh, teepee <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and aluminum foil. So, yeah, it did look like a burrito, uh, <laughs> other than the fact that it was full of dirt. Sorry, I should have blown up the other ramps. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> God, so you came here to Central Washington University, Zion, and here you are. You're pulling, <laughs> you're I think, pulling bones out of a cliff. Yeah, you should probably do like a close pull up, and then he can blow sand in your face, oh, and yeah. it'll be oh, really dramatic. Yeah, it can be like, <sighs> there it is. <laughs> I'm going to film you too, Zion. Oh We're going to be <laughs> all possible Paparazzi angles. <laughs> so what are your bets on what this toe is, Zion? We got Equus simplicidens coming out our ears. So uh, yeah, but Equus simplicidens. But it could also be a pronghorn. Could be a pronghorn. It could actually be a deer for once. It could actually be a deer. It's so skinny. I'm going to veto Equus simplicidens. Yeah, they have fat yeah, little yeah, nugget toes. Big. Yeah. Is that another antelope type? Uh, Equus is uh, the horse. Horse. Oh, yeah. So common names. Horse toes oh, have like fat. Equa. Got they it. only have the one toe, so they're fat toes. Okay. Yep. Uh, but then the other things that we found out here is we found some deer. Uh, we found what we thought was a deer toe. Turns out to maybe be pronghorn toe. Um, but we could also have <laughs> we could also have bighorn sheep out here. Uh, so it could be that. We could also have camels and llamas. So it could be that. Just depends on how long it is when we get it out of the wall. So it could be a bear. Geez. Ooh, yeah. I don't know. It doesn't have a carnivore look to it. But it could be. I mean, I don't know from this angle. <laughs> so I don't want to be difficult, but it has to be younger than 3 million uh, Y again? Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Okay. It's just that all of the other animals that we found have been. Got it. So, I mean, that's the thing with biostratigraphy is sometimes you find an animal that shouldn't be there but is, and yeah. then you have to revise your estimates on what age it is. Uh, so probably less than three, but 
it could potentially be more than three and then we just have like the earliest saber tooth or whatever ever but that would be <laughs> so quite often you're getting an age not from a datable layer on the site but like a worldwide known uh yes. here's the age range we know from worldwide examples they're called north american land mammal ages aka nalmas if you want to be Really cool. Yes, I do. I <laughs> want to be cool like that. Okay, yeah. that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So you you know, if you can identify a certain body part, yep, it's a known thing when those things showed up in the fossil record in North America and when they disappeared. And they always change a little bit because you you know you say things like, oh, deer didn't get here until five. Yeah. And then if you find one at five point one, uh, so biostratigraphy is constantly updated when you find more and more specimens right uh biostratigraphy so finding stratigraphy or sequences of life and then anytime you get a date in there that's really great yes a it nails down your biostratigraphy and b uh, it's a lot tighter of a number than biostratigraphy biostratigraphy is often like ah it's between 25 and 35 million sure. years old sure which is helpful yeah it's not 500 million right. but it's yeah. not as good as a yeah. nice date can be huh Okay, well, I'm already yeah. surprised. I figured you'd have that thing out, but you're you're digging and it's... Is it getting harder in there? Woo! All right, that just came out. It's looking long. Yeah, it's probably something that... Yeah, it, it, the soil is getting, it's getting more. Yeah. Like... <laughs> just trying to be careful. I know. Well, I would go more up above it. Okay. When you're working with stuff that's in a vertical wall, it's going to be way better to excavate from above first and then from below. Come soft? <laughs> yes. Okay. So Megan, like most children, I assumed you were into fossils, but that never really left you and you just kept going? Actually, it did leave me for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I used to work on modern slugs. Good lord. <laughs> That is more dull than mid-level amphibian taxonomy. I have a whole paper about modern slugs. I got paid $25 an hour to look for slugs <laughs> for two years. Where was that? Oh, it was in Oregon. Oregon. <laughs> Jumping slugs. <laughs> they don't really jump. They kind of thrash. Less arms, obviously, involved uh, in the thrashing. Um, but yeah, I went to outdoor school, so sixth grade, mm -hmm. and I decided I wanted to be a I went, I went to outdoor school thinking, sorry, I keep touching the microphone, uh, thinking I wanted to be a um, flight attendant, and I left wanting to be a paleontologist, geologist, herpetologist. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess everybody should go to outdoor school then. That yeah. sounds pretty good to me. What yeah. A, what it a change. pretty well. <laughs> okay, that's just, I'm not even to I'm the gonna, back of the... I'm pretty sure I know what type of toe this is. Yeah. So I'm gonna go a little closer. I can feel it wiggling actually. So Okay, sweet. I am just overly cautious. Yep, that's <laughs> fair. Well you also study oh see it's wiggling a little bit. Yeah. You don't want to pull it straight out of the wall, of course, because then you leave half of it in the wall. I know. <laughs> the things I study are much older and more fragile. That's true. So this is still a toe or are we into something that's connected to the toe at this point. We've definitely got a toe, whether or not there's another toe behind it. Oh. There, the connective tissue that would hold it together in life definitely will not be there anymore. Right. So when we pull it out, we'll dig back a little bit just to make sure that there's nothing deeper. Oh! oh. Ah, ha, ha. Here. It's, it's, it's paleontology. Okay. It yeah. happens. We have glue. That's not bad, actually. That's actually kind of, yeah, you can, you can see the, that's my bee. Yeah. Okay, that actually, the preservation of the internal that is some structure. beautiful is internal structure. Gorgeous. Yeah. Mm. That's it. You want to okay. hold it? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, now I have anxiety. Here, I got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, can I scoot yeah. past you? It's okay to lose a little bit of that cortical bone. We can't glue it back, anyways. Yeah. God, that internal structure is gorgeous, though. I was not expecting to look that nice based on the outside. Wow. Yeah. And I'll put some on this side, too. So this is uh, reversible glue, mm. which is important because if you glue it together incorrectly, oh, God. that can be bad. Yeah. But this is really loose glue called consolidant, and it 
penetrates the specimen, hmm. holding it together from the inside. Which obviously the rock didn't do very well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I think probably we should let that set for a little yeah. bit and then we'll finish the rest of it. That is a rock. No, I think it's a rock, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a rock. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. I really yeah. appreciate it. That's, no problem. Uh, plenty, lots of distraction here. Yes. That I provided, so <laughs> appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. No problem. Can I take a TikTok of you trying to dig up a specimen over there while we wait for this glue to set? Sure. All right.